Hello, I'm Dr. John Abendanza. I'm an optometrist and a specialist in behavioral optometry. In my practice, about 70% of the patients I see are bright students who are struggling in school, especially with reading. To understand why they're having difficulties, it's important to understand the reading process. When teachers and educators think about the reading process, they normally think of decoding as the first step. They believe that when you read, the first step is to figure out what the word is. Then you can figure out what that word means and how it relates to the words that came before it. Then you can figure out the underlying meaning of the passage. So for teachers and educators, there are a number of ways of doing this decoding. There's the phonetic approach, using phonics to break words down into their sounds. There's the whole language approach, where you figure out the word by context. And then there are the sight words, the words you recognize by how they look. But whichever method you use, for teachers and educators, it all starts with figuring out what the word is. Now, I hear that and I think to myself, no, that's not the first step. The way I see it, that's actually step four. When I give this talk to teachers and educators, they look at me as if I have three heads. But think about it. Before you can answer the question, what is the word, you need to answer the question, where is the word? And how do you get that information? How do you know where the word is on the page? Through vision, of course. And after you find that word, then you need to see where the next word is, and the next word, and so on. The eyes need to track. That's the first step in the reading process. Before you begin the process of figuring out what the word is, you have to be able to see the word and then the next word right there on the page. What's the second step in the reading process? Well, once you know where the word is, you now need to get the two eyes to look at that same spot and work together as a team. If one eye is looking at the word and one eye isn't, because it's looking at something else, the brain is going to get confused because it's getting two different images that it can't put together. So that's the second step in the reading process, getting the two eyes to work together as a team. So how much phonics is there in getting the two eyes to work together as a team? Or how much phonics is there in getting the eyes to track along a line of print? None. Now, once I know where the word is on the page, and once I get both of my eyes looking at that spot and working together as a team, I need to focus my eyes so I can see the letters clearly. And I need to maintain that focus for as long as I choose to read. This is the third step in the reading process, being able to focus on the words for the entire time I'm reading. Now, how much phonics is there in this third step in keeping the letters clear? None. So here we have the first three steps of the reading process, and we haven't even begun to read. Think about it. What happens when you have a child who has difficulty finding the word on the page and then seeing the next word and the next word and keeping track, who has difficulty getting the two eyes to work together as a team, or who has difficulty focusing and refocusing their eyes or maintaining that focus over an extended period of time. This child is already behind. This child is going to struggle with reading even before he or she has had a chance to read the very first word. These difficulties 
are called functional vision problems because they have to do with the functioning of the visual system. They interfere with the child's ability to read and you should know that they are common. They are not rare. If you would like more information or if you would like to take the vision symptom questionnaire, you'll find it in the vision therapy section on our website at greatvisioncare.com. Thank you.